This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. I make the mistake of working on my own, but then I wait to see I can alone. You wrap your arms around me, then you comfort me and give me just what I need. Answer my prayer. You will answer, I don't answer my prayer. Oh, oh, oh. Answer my prayer. For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus 38, verse 18 to 28. The curtain for the entrance to the courtyard was of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. It was 20 cubits long, and like the curtains of the courtyard, five cubits high, with four posts and four bronze bases. Their hooks and bands were silver, and their tops were overlaid with silver, all the tent pegs of the tabernacle and of the surrounding courtyard were bronze. These are the amounts of the materials used for the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the covenant law, which were recorded at Moses' command by the Levites under the direction of Ithumar, son of Aaron, the priest. Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, made everything the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Oholiab, son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer, and an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. The total amount of the gold from the wave offering used for all the work on the sanctuary was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. The silver obtained from those of the community who were counted in the census was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. One beaker per person, that is, half a shekel, according to the sanctuary shekel. From everyone who had crossed over to those counted, 20 years old or more, a total of 603,550 men. The 100 talents of silver were used to cast the bases for the sanctuary and for the curtain. 100 bases from the 100 talents, one talent for each base. They used the 1775 shekels to make the hooks for the posts, to overlay the tops of the posts, and to make their bands. The bronze from the wave offering was 70 talents and 2400 shekels. They used it to make the bases for the entrance to the tent of meeting, 
the bronze altar with its bronze grating and all its utensils, the basis for the surrounding courtyard and those for its entrance, and all the tent pegs for the tabernacle and those for the surrounding courtyard. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus 38 verse 18 to 28. What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Every time you wander away, no matter what you, huh? My name is Thomas Isaac and you're welcome once again to your favorite program, You Decide. We started with Israel in Exile about one month ago and we have been discussing this all through. I have with me once again my seasoned panelist. They are going to help us do good justice to the topic at hand. We are not the same, actually. We are not the same, the differences aside. Niaite, we want you to continue. Right. Israel mm. was the first to um, leave the land, and they went into Assyrian captivity. You mean the northern kingdom of Israel? Kingdom. Okay. Yes. And um, from historical documents, you get to know that from Assyria, they decided they were not going to live among the heathen. They wanted to go and live um, in a land where no man dwells. Is this in the Bible or on historical documents? These are in historical doc- doc- okay. documents. So um, they went to Asaret. Asaret is what Columbus discovered as the new world. The America? Yes. Okay. And if you know history, when Columbus got to America... There were the Red Indians there. And these people identified themselves as being some of the tribes of Israel. Mm. And they even showed the new settlers where some of their other brethren were living. Um, So the ten tribes mainly are believed to have gone towards that side, towards the new world. Now, Judah, you remember Christ telling them, that when you see Jerusalem surrounded, flee to the mountains. This, according to historical documents, and when I say, I'm not saying document, but documents, Mm -hmm. several documents that agree. This prophecy that Christ made came to pass in 70 AD. And after Jerusalem had been besieged by the Romans for about seven years, and they couldn't go out and... were not having food to eat and the like, you know, now they resorted to eating themselves, you know, mothers cooking their children and eating and all that. Finally, they began to flee across the Atlas Mountains. And the Atlas Mountains is what separates Europe from Africa. And so Judah mainly scattered into Africa, and most of them ended up in West Africa. And there are so many historical documents that show you where the trail of the Israelites in West Africa are. And so, in West Africa, you can find them scattered all over. 
in Ghana, you can find them in Ivory Coast, you can find them in Benin, you can find them in Nigeria, you can find them in South Africa, you can find some of them there. They are scattered all over the place. Now, according to some of these documents that have been able to identify these people, and these people know themselves. Mr. Isaac, you know where you are coming from. You don't need someone to tell you where you are coming from. And so these people are able to identify their, their, their oral history and some of the, their historical documents. Tell them where they are coming from. And, um, for instance, Ruben has been identified to be the aborigines of Australia at the moment. Simeon has been identified to be Dominican Republic. Um, Judah mainly the Negroes in Africa who were taken as slaves, you know, to the Americas, Brazil, and, 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 and the rest. Um, Benjamin has been found to be uh, those who came to, uh, part of those who came into West Africa who were still taken as slaves and are now those in Jamaica and Trinidad. Um, you have Zebulon to be in those in Panama and Guatemala. Guatemala, Isaka to be the Mexicans, Dan to be, um, not Dan, Dan was cut off, Gad to be the North Americans, Asha to be the Venezuelans, Argentinas, and um, some a few of, of Brazilians, Naphtali to be Hawaiians and um, Samoans, uh, Samoans, okay, yes, someone. Then you have Ephraim to be the Puerto Rico. And then Manasseh to be Cuba. These people know themselves and have been able to identify themselves. And the interesting thing is that you see the certain similarities among these people, you know, if you carefully study. You have a lot of evidence when you study. The, in fact, when you study Deuteronomy 33 and then Genesis 49, these are the places where uh, Moses was pronouncing the blessing that will hap- come upon these people in the end. And then in Genesis 49, you see their father Jacob when he called them before he died, telling them how their end is going to be like. And when you strike these, you know, with these people, these physical people at the moment, and, 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 and you strike it also against um, Deuteronomy 28, you see, you know, the resemblance. Now, I, I have some very few questions that yes. I want you to tackle. That um, what would be the relevance now of the Tower of Babel, where uh, it is recorded in Scripture that because of the differences in languages, the people were scattered, each one taking their partner according to how they understand them and they go. If we want to trace the Israelites back to where they all came from and they've scattered this far. How come they all don't speak one language? Because I don't think they would develop a new language altogether different from what they were speaking in their hometown before they decided to leave. So how come the North Americans, Brazil, Fiji, Cuba, Dominican... If you read a little on slavery, Mm -hmm. you will get to know that... And this is a practical thing that is happening among the black Americans as of today. You hardly see the fathers. Mm. When you go to America among the blacks, you hardly see the fathers. There are a lot of single homes in among the black Americans. Why? Because during slave times, the children were separated from their fathers. Because it was the fathers who were to hand over their history to them, who were to train them, who were it, they were separated because their masters needed to reorient them their children exactly indoctrinate and teach them i mean let them forget who they are and it conforms to what scripture says yeah what's your take so far we've had a lot of punctures bullets facts information being pumped to us just like our pre-commencement discussions we're having what's your take on that the scattering of the israelites into current locations specific locations that niaiti has mentioned yeah what i'm saying you see, when you go through the biblical history, you will see where they came from, how they went to occupy the places of promise, where there were even settlers there before they went there. The Canaanite country, how they changed. Jerusalem was a Jebusite 
you know, country. Jebu. Yes. Jebu. And, uh, you know, David made it the capital of Israel. Yeah. So, even before the nation Israel will come together, God had some people, he said, I will take them out and I will settle you and I will put you together. So, Israel has an history as to how they got their settlement, how they settled, and where they were saying until they were scattered. Until the Babylonian and uh, the Assyrian captivity. As much as you're talking about um, documents, there are those documents who are also saying, they call them the lost tribe, that they are lost. And then you see Judah, after the Babylonian captivity, the Persians came and conquered Babylon. And then Persia gave the children of Judah the permission to go back and re-establish Jerusalem. So they left, came and rebuilt and put up the temple that they were gathering together until Alexander the Great Greece also came and conquered Israel. You know, scattered them again until the Roman also empire came in and the Romans were in charge. So even at the time of Jesus, it was Roman dominion. And so you see Israel and then later the warning of the evasion and that the destruction of the temple in AD 70 and they had to go around. So Israel itself as a community, they've had this up and down movement. All right. All too soon, it's time for us to draw the curtains on today's program. Until then, always remember that in matters of faith, you decide. It was nothing but the truth. Only truth comes from you. It was untrue. It was nothing but the truth, and it's all that you can do. Oh, only truth. Loving truth. Love. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on plus 233-244-673528 or 244 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Greater Accra Region, Ghana.
Brothers and sisters, you are welcome to the moment of truth. And we are going to study the Bible this moment. Our Bible discussion here is captioned, The Power of God. We believe that God is the only one who has the power over every situation in our lives. And we'll read something from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, which tells us that, Come all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is telling us that we should all come to him, all we who are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. That is the promise our Lord Jesus Christ, through God, has given to us. And friend, I want to tell you that God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, that is Psalm 46 verse 1 to 3. It's also given us a promise that God is the power over every situation in our lives. These storms can be our financial problems. These storms could be our academic problems. These storms could be our relationship problems. And Psalm 46 verse 1 to 3 is telling us that, God is our refuge and strength and a very present in time of trouble. That is, he has the power over every situation in time of trouble. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon the house, but it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And that rock that this house was founded upon is God, our God, who we are supposed to serve. That is Matthew chapter 7 verse 25. God is the strength. God is the rock on which we build all our problems. We have to put all our problems on the rock, which is God, in order that we'll have solutions to these problems. Each and every one of us here, regardless of our status, we all have our individual storms, winds, floods, as well as in our lives. Some of these storms could be the following. That is, as I've mentioned previously, that financial problems, academic problems, relationship problems, health problems, emotional problems. There are many at times we face financial problems in our lives. We as students, we as workers, we need money, we need finances in order to finance our endeavors in our education, in our field of work. It is for this factor that we need God in our lives in order to provide for us, in order to give us all our needs. In terms of academic problems, we study, but we don't get what we study. We are able to learn, but when it comes to assessments, we fail. We do not give our best. It is at this moment that God comes into our lives as our rock and allows us to put our problems on him as a rock that will never fail us. In terms of relationship, we have so many problems. We get friends for a moment and before we realize these friends leave us, we don't know what we do, but it is left to us to ask from God in order to give us the power, in order to give us the reason, in order to give us the mind that we'll use in order to move with these friends. We make so many friends in our lives who in turn bring negative effects to our lives but the rock is telling us that god is telling us that we need to come to him in our relationships that we will be able to stand firm in our relationships that whatever any friend of ours would plan even negative he would have the power to change it to positive in our lives somebody say amen health problems we have health problems in our lives many of us have so many health problems in our lives but we don't know how we solve them we go to hospitals here and there but there are no solutions but god is telling us that he is the only one who has solutions to problems he has solutions to our health problems and has the power to heal anyone who is suffering from any health problem emotional problems as well come into our lives due to our imaginations due to how we think but the Bible is telling us that no matter how our emotional problems may be, 
we have solution to them in the Bible. God has solution to our problems. Now, there are so many problems in your life, not regarding to what I've just mentioned, but you have realized so many problems in your life. God is telling you that despite the fact that you haven't heard any of yours mentioned, you still have solution to them through him. And he is the only one who is going to get solutions to such problems. He is telling us that he knows the minds of all of us. He knows the minds of all his creatures. He knew us before we were even conceived in the wombs of our parents. Therefore, why don't you submit your problems to him? For he is the only one who has solution to them. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 tells us, Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. For we, your children, have gotten this opportunity once again to have the faith in you that you are the only one who has the power, who has the strength to do whatever we want in our lives. Father Lord, we pray that take absolute control in our lives. Take your rock in our lives. Build your rock in our lives. That, O oh Lord, we will be able to overcome all kinds of temptations, all kinds of problems in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu dot edu dot gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five. Adenta Greater Accra Region. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>